Hi there, my name is Jessica. I work with the Ministry of Transportation. We're here in Nanaimo today showing you how to install a sediment fence. So today the tools we have are two lengths of sediment fence. We have a wrecking bar if it's difficult to dig. We have two shovels, which we'll be using to dig in the sediment fence. We have a pickaxe, we need to dig deep, a couple of sledgehammers, and then obviously a stapler and a knife if we need to repair the fence at all before we install it. Step one is to inspect the geotextile fabric and the stakes to make sure there's no rips, tears, no missing staples. If when you're inspecting the sediment fence you see that you have a rip or a tear and you don't want to cut this section out, you can go ahead and actually just roll the post past the fabric, take your stapler, staple that part of the fabric in, use as many staples as you want, then you can go ahead and just use that part of the fence. So after you've looked over the geotextile fabric and make sure that all the staples are there, we'll select a site to install the fence. What we're looking for is you want it to be at the base of the exposed slope from the construction site and you're going to want to install it in the shape of a smile so that we're capturing any loose sediment that might roll off during construction. Marking the location you can do with tape, you can do with the end of a shovel or just with your foot. We're going to install a shorter section today than usual that you'd see on a job site. We're going to put a about 10 meters of fence in. Now that we've laid out where we're gonna install the fence, we're gonna dig a 15 centimeter wide by 15 centimeter deep trench. If you don't have a tape, you can use your shovel and basically about the depth of your shovel spade is going to be your depth as well as your width. A bit of a hack you can do in the field without a tape measure. We're going to alternate sides so that it will help with backfilling once we've installed the fence. Step four, we're going to lay out the fence with the fabric facing towards the slope and the posts facing downstream or downslope. And just we're gonna slide the posts to the back of the excavation. We're gonna start at one end and work towards the other end. In rocky soil like this, we're gonna use our wrecking bar to start a hole to make it easier on ourselves. Step five, we're gonna drive the stakes about a half a meter deep and spaced about two meters apart. And a little tip to make sure your fence doesn't droop is when we go to hammer this in, we're gonna have a slight angle and I'm gonna pull this towards me as I hammer it so we can tighten up the fence. Step six, you wanna make sure that the fabric is laying in the bottom of the trench. The bottom of the geotextile fabric is sitting perpendicular to the bottom of the trench and we're gonna bury to this fill line. Finally, step seven, backfill and compact the soil on top of the geotextile in the trench. And we're gonna make sure that we've put the material to the top of the fill line and we're gonna compact as we go along. We're gonna backfill both sides of the tents, make sure the material is up against the fabric. So here's an example of a common mistake where the geotextile fabric is not actually keyed into the soil. When there's a gap in the bottom of the fence, all of the sediment can continue to just flow off site. So here you can see that the posts are in front of the geotextile fabric. This leads to a less sturdy fencing system and potential for failure or staples to come out. So here we have a leaning post which is causing the fabric to be droopy. What we really want to see is it nice and tight like this. This leads to potential for failure and the fence itself to fall over. So there you have it. That's how to install a sediment fence and some of the common mistakes to avoid.